Hi, everybody. This is Julian from AWS. Welcome to episode 12 of my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified of future videos. In this episode, I'm going to go through latest announcements on services like recognition, transcribe, forecast, and a couple more things. Of course, I will do some demos and I will share some additional resources at the end. So let's not wait. Let's do the news. <laughs> Let's start with Amazon Transcribe, our speech-to-text service. You may remember my episode one demo on profanity filtering. If you haven't seen that, I recommend it. Here, uh, we added the capability to automatically redact personally identifiable information. And the use case for this is, of course, uh, if you have customer calls or customer discussions that contain PII, well, uh, you may not want those files to be stored um, as is, right? You may have to remove PII information from the sound files or from the transcripts. Okay, so one way or another, you need to locate this information in the file and, and remove it. Okay, and this is exactly what uh, this feature does. So I wrote the blog post for this. I will include the link in the video description and let's do a quick demo here. So we can see all the information that transcribe will uh, will uh, detect and remove so uh, social security numbers any credit card information banking information and of course names and email addresses etc etc okay so i recorded a short file so let's listen to this good morning everybody my name is julian simon and today i feel like sharing a whole lot of personal information with you let's start with my social security number one two three Four five six seven eight nine zero zero three. My credit card number is six five two no, eight no. zero five five nine, and my CVV code is six six six. My bank account number is triple eight zero zero five six two nine eight. My email address is julian at amazon dot com. And my phone number is 06-329-566-88. Well, I think that's it. You know a whole lot about me, and I hope that Amazon Transcribe is doing a good job at redacting that personal information away. Let's check. Okay, so obviously it's all fake. Don't worry about this. Uh, well, I guess my CVV might just be 666, but I guess I need to check that. So. Uh, that's my sound file. I put it in an S3 bucket and then I use the start transcription job API, which is available in our, our SDKs. And I wrote that bit of a PHP code, which uh, seemed to cause a lot of distress from my colleagues because you know it's a well-known fact. I have no love for PHP, but hey, you guys are using it, so I should try and use it too, okay? Call this API, wait for a little bit and of course, we can see stuff in the console and then we can grab the uh, output from uh, from that command. And it's a JSON file, no surprise. And uh, it has a whole bunch of information uh, that you would normally find in transcribe. And of course, it has the transcription with PII redacted. OK, so every bit of PII is actually replaced automatically by a PII tag. OK, and you have timestamps. So if you want to go and do additional audio editing on top of this to actually remove the that information from the sound file itself, you can absolutely do that using the timestamps and audio editing software. OK, so, well, that's it for transcribe and it's available, um, you know, pretty much everywhere. OK, so that's pretty cool. Nice little feature. Right. Let's uh, talk about recognition now. So recognition added yet another capability, which is um, detecting text in videos. Uh, and that's super useful because uh, you may want to look for news headlines or you know, company names or any kind of information, uh, subtitles, why not? And, uh, and that's, uh, that's gonna come in handy. Uh, you can also restrict the uh, the area of the video where you want to uh, to extract text um, because maybe if you're looking for subtitles obviously they'll be located in a very specific part well-defined part of the video so you can do that and ignore 
text that would show up somewhere else in the video. So let's do uh, let's do a quick demo of this. Okay, so this is the recognition console, and uh, and I've 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 uploaded a bunch of videos here. So well, I've uh, I have this one. Uh, let's look. Ooh. <laughs> In time, All you right. will know what it's like to lose. To feel so desperately that you're right. That to... All right, Thanos for the win. Um, so it's a short video. There isn't a lot of text in it. Uh, probably just the logo at the beginning here. So it's already uploaded in S3. And uh, let's try and run a bit of code to see if we can pick uh, pick up the text here. So uh, let me show you the code. It's super simple. Uh, this is Python because it's enough PHP for a lifetime now. And uh, we can use the start text detection API to get everything going. So uh, just pass um, the uh, S3 location of your video, the bucket name, the uh, video object name, and that's it, right? And you get a response with a job ID. And then once the video has been processed, and uh, you can just wait for a bit, or you can use an SNS notification. Our recognition uh, supports that. We'll send a, uh, an SNS message or SNS notification, I should say, uh, once the video has been processed. And you can call the get text detection API, passing the job ID and extracting the information. So um, I've done this before, and you would use it like this, right? Uh, start text detection with the location of the video and then just get text detection results. Okay, and this is what you get, right? Uh, analysis is very fast, uh, you know, it's, uh, it really takes no time at all. It's a short video, but it was, uh, you know, just a few seconds really, I was surprised how fast it was. And um, so we can print out some information. Uh, so we have timestamps, we have the detected text uh, so whether it's a line of a, or a word, right? We give you both um, uh, information here, right? Uh, so we can see, so we can see detected text, right? We see the timestamp, so Marvel Studios, the confidence, which is very high. And then we'll tell you if it's a line of text or if it's a word of text. Because um, I commented out this bit here that shows you the bounding box uh, because the output gets really noisy, but um, you get the exact location of that line or of that word. So if you're looking for specific words and they're part of a line, then you know exactly where that word is, okay, which is what we see here, right? The Marvel Studios line and then information for each word, okay? And of course, these are present at multiple timestamps, so uh, you, they will appear multiple times, okay? So this is super simple, um, and uh, I think it's going to come in handy in a in a lot of use cases for, for customers. Okay, that's it for recognition. Uh, let's talk about Amazon Forecast. So Amazon Forecast is another high level service that lets you build um, time series prediction models from your own data set. Okay, so uh, this is a very, very complicated problem, but I think Forecast makes it very simple. Just upload your time series data to S3 uh, and then either use uh, AutoML to select an algo or you can go and pick your favorite algo and tweak it if you know what you're doing and then a model is trained and is deployed and everything happens on fully managed infrastructure okay so forecast is very nice and forecast will work from your data set so your time series data but you can also inject uh, additional metadata. So uh, if you're trying to forecast uh, sales, uh, inventory sales, then uh, you could add metadata information on the items uh, themselves on top of, you know, just the, the stock or the sales uh, value you want to predict. And uh, another piece of metadata you can inject is, um, is that time of the year a public holiday or not? And this is really useful because obviously this will massively impact uh, the, the behavior of your model, right? Um, if it's uh, Christmas Day or if it's uh, New Year's Day, whatever, then 
these are really special days. And so maybe they're high demand days or maybe they're low demand days, depending on your business case. But anyway, uh, telling the model that these days are special holidays and, uh, and that the behavior of the model should be different. Well, that's useful information. So there's actually a parameter for this uh, when you create the predictor. So when you create the model itself, you can pass it uh, a supplementary parameter, which is down there. Yes, supplementary features. Okay, and for now there's only one supported and this is the list of, uh, actually it's the country code you want to build a model for and this will uh, factor in the the list of holidays for that specific country okay so now we can support up to 30 countries uh, including France right which has lots of holiday as you know uh, we never really work here and uh, and so now you can just uh, add that extra information that extra metadata to your models okay so that's pretty cool still on forecast uh, we extended the DPR plus algo. So let me explain. Like I said, when you train a model on forecast, you can either use AutoML and let forecast pick the right algo for you, or you can pick the algo yourself. Okay, one of those algos is DPR plus, which is an Amazon invented algo that was published. I will add the link in the video description. And DPR lets you uh, build a model using a large number of uh, of time series, right? So if you want to train a single model on multiple time series, um, this is a good algo to use. And the, the basic idea here is using deep learning, DPR will extract hidden patterns um, that are um, uh, present in your multiple time series, right? And there is some uh, relationship between those time series and of course the human eye cannot see them but DPR will find those patterns and build a model accordingly so this is a really really important and, and powerful algo so what did we add here so we added hyperparameters um, the first one is one that lets you average multiple models uh, over a single training so uh, kind of an ensemble technique I guess where uh, you can train a number of models and and then you can average the predictions from those models and you know ensemble prediction is a powerful technique because i guess the theory is or my theory is that uh, every model will make slightly different mistakes so if you have multiple models predicting and then you average the result you tend to average out the the big the big mistakes and uh, you know the the team of models does a better job than any single model would do. Okay, uh, the second uh, thing is the ability to uh, change the learning rate over time. Uh, so that's something we're used to uh, to doing with deep learning models, uh, scheduling the learning rate over epochs. And so you can do the same. Uh, you can have uh, uh, you decay uh, learning rate decay. So uh, uh, gradually um, decrease the learning rate over time to uh, train uh, more precisely over time. And the last one is, uh, is an obscure one. Uh, and if you know exactly what this is, you probably don't need me to explain it. Uh, so there's a new likelihood function. And the likelihood function is basically the function that uh, injects uncertainty in, in the prediction. Because uh, time series are uh, noisy and unpredictable. And so you need to factor that in. So based on, depending on the distribution of your data, certain functions work better than others. And well, this is one of them. Okay, so uh, if you can't sleep tonight, uh, read about piecewise linear likelihood functions. Fascinating stuff. Again, if you know what you're doing, this is gonna come in handy. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, oh yes, we have upgraded deep learning containers, one of my favorite topics. So by now, um, you should know we have a nice collection of deep learning containers that uh, package TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, uh, and, and a few more things. And they're off the shelf. You can grab them from Amazon ECR or uh, Docker registry service. 
You can run them on your own machine. You can run them on container services, ECS, EKS. You can run them on EC2. And of course, you can run them on Amazon SageMaker. So um, basically, you know, catching up with the latest version. And I'm really happy to see that we have TensorFlow 2.1, which is the, uh, the very latest version until the next one. But we'll keep catching up. All right. That's it for the news. Now let's share some resources. I recorded a couple of videos that uh, you might like. So the first one is actually a very popular request. And that's how do I use SageMaker on my local machine? Now, don't get me wrong. SageMaker is really about training and deploying at scale on uh, fully managed infrastructure. But in the early stage of your project, when you're debugging your code, testing your code, you want to work locally, right? Because you just go faster, you iterate faster, you don't have to create managed infrastructure, you don't have to pay for it, you don't have to worry about any setup there. So um, this video will show you how to take uh, existing code, existing notebooks, and just adapt them to run them on your local machine. And, well, you'll watch the video if you're interested, but in a nutshell, this means um, uh, using a, an IAM role for your notebook, and it means um, having local data, although you could absolutely train on, uh, on S3 data. Uh, you need local Docker on your machine because you're going to pull Docker containers to your local machine, and you need to set the... Um, SageMaker estimator to train on your local machine. And uh, I think that's about it, right? So it's very simple. You can take any notebook and very, very easily adapt it and run it on your local machine. Uh, there, the only restriction here is that this will only work for frameworks, okay? So uh, TensorFlow and uh, PyTorch, MXNet, Scikit-Learn, etc., And it will only work for your own containers. So if you're training with built-in algos like DPR or, uh, or the other ones, it's not going to work because those containers are not uh, available outside of AWS. Okay, but if you're using frameworks or your own containers, this will absolutely work. So again, this is uh, you know what took me so long. This is uh, something that you've been asking for a long, long time, lots of you, so here it is. And... Um, I also uh, gave, uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, an AWS webinar on SageMaker Studio where um, I try to show you as much as I can in 47 minutes, going from the IDE to, uh, to running notebooks, to uh, uh, hyperparameter optimization, to SageMaker Autopilot for AutoML, to SageMaker model debugger and SageMaker model monitor. I mean, it's it's a packed session. And uh, um, well, I got good feedback on it and it's on YouTube. So uh, now you can watch it too and, uh, and learn about all the latest features. Okay, this is it for this episode. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified of future episodes. And I'll see you soon with more content. Until then, keep rocking.